everybody and welcome again to Conversations in Interventional Cardiology. My name is Sahil Parikh. I'm an interventional cardiologist and an associate professor at Columbia Medical Center in New York City. And I'm delighted to be representing Jay Sky and the editor-in-chief, Dr. Alexander Lansky. Uh, you can find us online at jsky.org and follow us on Twitter or X, whatever it is today, at myjsky. Jay Sky is the home of all official Jay uh, Sky documents. And, and we're here today to publish or to talk about the publication of a forthcoming document called The Intravascular Ultrasound Use in Peripheral Artery Disease and Deep Venous Interventions, Multidisciplinary Expert Opinion. It's a multi-society document, which is what's really unique about it. And uh, it's an effort that's really begun as the brainchild of Eric Sosemski, who's with us today. Uh, he's the Director of Vascular Intervention and uh, at the Cardiovascular Institute at Beth Israel Deaconess in Boston and uh, has been joined by a, a merry band of like-minded individuals from other societies. Uh, we have with us today Kush Desai, who's an Associate Professor of Radiology at Northwestern, and Chris Qualick, who's the Chief Medical Officer of Manger of Medical Partners in Wellesley, Massachusetts, and a card-carrying vascular surgeon. So we have a, a terrific multidisciplinary panel where we'll talk about the document and we'll talk about its implications. Uh, Eric, I want to turn it over to you. Uh, maybe you can start by uh, telling us a little bit about how the document got organized under your leadership, and then show us a little bit of, of a preview of what's in the document so our audience knows where to go for the details. Thanks, Sahil. So I'm super excited to be joined by this um, wonderful group. Um, both Dr. Qualick and, and Dr. Desai helped co-chair this document with me, Dr. Aronow, and others. And, you know, we've seen over the last several years that there's been an increasing interest in intravascular ultrasound. People are using this for all various disorders, whether it's deep venous intervention, peripheral artery intervention of the lower extremity, aortic disease, AV fistula. So we know that there's an immense amount of interest in developing this space and understanding this technology better. But just like what plagues our field is we tend to be sitting in silos in terms of how we um, advanced technology. And I think that that was really the motivation behind this document was the opportunity to bring all our friends, colleagues, and us, you know, uh, clinicians across all spaces, taxonomies, groups, societies to come together and try to put into perspective where IVIS as part of the future of peripheral intervention is going um, and, and provide a landscape and some pearls for, for moving this into the next um, really advancement. I, I want to thank really all of the societies. Sky really was um, the lead and, and helped organize this effort. But AVF, ABLS, SIR, SVM, and SVS were incredible partners throughout this journey. Again, you can imagine there's a lot of logistics in trying to get many organizations to come together on a document, which will be published in JSKY as well as two other journals. And so we're incredibly thrilled with the output. I'm incredibly grateful to my colleagues who participate on this and helped me develop this program. And I really hope this helps advance our field of intravascular ultrasound. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a few minutes just to go through some of the highlights of the document, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Qualick and Dr. Desai to provide a, um, an uh, orthogonal opinion from the interventional radiology and vascular surgery perspective. So this um, document really was a, a brainchild of uh, multiple of us who decided that we should do this in a format of a round table. So um, each society had the opportunity to elect two members to participate in the round table. There was some overlap, as you can imagine, across societies. Um, but these were independent uh, clinicians who expressed interest in intravascular ultrasound and were nominated by their society. We had 15 um, panelists in general um, participating in this round table, which was held on the 13th, uh, the 3rd of February in, in 2023. And uh, we developed a really advanced curriculum. Each a member of the panel presented um, and allowed us some time for conversation to summarize our thoughts and collectively uh, gauge our, our opinions in terms of each of the areas that we cover in the document. Again, this is uh, being published in JSKY and then as well simultaneously published in uh, the Journal of Vascular Surgery, Vascular Insights, 
and then JVIR. So this is really an important multidisciplinary cross-discipline document among experts in the full vascular space. So some of the um, highlight tables I want to just show you over the next few slides are the following. Um, these two tables really demonstrated where intravascular ultrasound tends to shine in comparison to straightforward angiography. On the left here, you can see a number of different characteristics that we identified where intravascular ultrasound provides um, improvement in identification of lesions, therapies, um, as well as um, extrinsic disease. On the right here was a, a previously published um, independent uh, expert opinion on the appropriate use of intravascular ultrasound, and this was reviewed in detail in terms of guiding our pathway forward with experts in the space who are performing these procedures every day. We note that there are not, you know, this field is still in its infancy. There's still imperfections in the technology and how we roll this therapy out into clinical practice. And so, you know, we wanted to spend some time highlighting areas where there needs to be growth, whether that's um, improvements in imaging technology, um, understanding how operators can get comfortable with something that may not have trained on, in particular with imaging interpretation. We know a big part of our field is providing access, cost, reimbursement for this technology, the only way for this to be used uh, universally. Um, I think that everybody fears increasing the length of their procedures and trying to quell some of those concerns in terms of the additional time to use intravascular ultrasound. And then also thinking about where there remains deficits in the evidence and where we need to go in terms of um, evidence generation. This is a um, complex table that requires more of a uh, deep dive when you get into the document after publication. But, you know, we really wanted to separate those who might be early in their IVIS experience and those who are more uh, advanced in their experience and, and really trying to identify areas where um, they should try to master early on and then advance uh, their knowledge operators into on the next stage of IVIS interpretation. So uh, really our, our goal here, uh, splitting this by both arterial and venous intervention, was to create a pathway from the beginner to the advanced IVIS uh, user and, and, to, and to understand some milestones and competency that can help uh, clinicians get to the next uh, level of their intravascular imaging uh, um, abilities. Lastly, um, as I mentioned already, there remains needs in this space. Um, I already mentioned some of the needs for more data, and I think that will be important as we move forward. And we provide some um, initiatives that could help um, really generate this data to help uh, cement this into our clinical practices. Um, obviously, education is key. You know, again, a lot of people are learning this on the spot, um, and that is usually sufficient for some technologies, but this one is, is quite advanced. And so I think um, really generating the educational platform through our societies, our congresses, um, to help really promote this technology is critical. And then most importantly, and really what I think I'm uh, is the take home of this document, is, is interdisciplinary collaboration. Again, this document is highlighted by every major society participation, equal participation, sharing our views, coming together to create a document that we think can advance our field in the endovascular space. And I think that's what's going to be the spotlight of this document. And so I think we need more documents like this. I think that we need to continue to work closely together. This is a space that it seems like we're universally all in support of. And I think that um, really is a take home for um, um, this uh, round table and this expert opinion from um, major vascular societies. Thank you, Eric. That's uh, terrific. I think that, you know, it's a, it, it's an incredible amount of work. I can tell having been a participant, I'm grateful for the opportunity and, and having participated in the editorial process and, and having also had to uh, do some of the revisions. I know that every word has been carefully selected so that it means what it says and it says what it means. Um, Chris and, and Kush, you guys have also participated in this, I, and I know mo both of you have been involved in other types of guideline activities before. How would you compare and contrast this a little bit pro process-wise, and then what do you think the impact is going to be? Chris, why don't you go ahead? Thanks. I, I think this is critically important. I, I think we are getting better at doing this in a multidisciplinary integrated fashion. Um, it is always a challenge whenever you're trying to deal with editorial boards and, and various societies and committees. And, and even in this process, we work through things. But I, I think there were a lot of 
conversations and give and take and back and forth. And we came to a consensus. And I think that's really with the strength of these types of documents. From a vascular surgery community standpoint, I think many of our vascular surgery colleagues will have experience with IVUS if they've done uh, either venous work uh, or particularly in the area of maybe aortic dissection. That was something that didn't exist a decade and a half ago or two decades ago. And now I would argue that if you're treating complex aortic pathology and not using IVUS, it's it's probably outside the standard of care. I have become a believer that the use of IVUS in the periphery can be extremely valuable. Uh, we know that about 80% of the time it changes something about our decision making. And once you become facile with it, I think it really does add value, whether it's sizing, whether it's treating outside areas that you thought whether it's treating less than we thought. Uh, so it goes both directions. This is not just a mechanism to say treat more. It often gets me to treat differently or treat less. I think Eric did a great job of pointing out some of the future needs, and that's probably the strength of this document from my perspective. I think it points out how far we still have to go. Um, there are trials out there, but I think we need more data. I think we are going to be held accountable in terms of cost and cost effectiveness. So we do need to work on comparative effectiveness data. We do need to think about where this fits into the overall um, you know, reimbursement strategy for hospital systems and patients. But I would also add that there are many scenarios where we're adding either time or cost, but because the value proposition for that adjunct is so high, uh, it's worthwhile. And I clearly believe that IVUS falls into that category. And then I think Eric pointed out perhaps the biggest thing, and many of us have been attending the VEATH meeting this week, the biggest thing we need is education in this area. There's so many of my colleagues out there who just don't feel comfortable or don't have that background in terms of interpretation of IVUS images. So I think all of us have a lot of work to do back at home educating colleagues, partners, collaborating with industry to uh, be able to help um, further this. Kush, additional thoughts? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, Chris put it, he really summarized it well. So I'll just kind of underscore one part of it that I think um, is particularly important in today's healthcare environment that's showing value, right? And so on 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 face, it seems you're adding time, you're adding cost by bringing another implement. But for all, those of us that use it, both on the arterial side and the venous side, it's about improving care of these patients and ultimately reducing reintervention, um, improving longevity, improving quality of life, and keeping them out of healthcare settings. And so if a little bit of un upfront cost saves a lot of downstream cost and improves the quality of care, I think that's why we're all here. And in order to do that, you need a multidisciplinary team. We all bring our biases, but we also all bring our strengths to the table. And those things combine, and on the bias side, cancel out, and then you have an output document like this, where, as Sahil put it, we've carefully gone through this with the fine tooth comb to make sure it reflects what we all feel and what we all think. Um, and so I'm just, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. And I think, again, this is the first step in a much bigger journey to ensure that our patients get the therapies that they need and that they deserve. Yeah, I, I, I hear here is what I could say, Kush. That's uh, exactly right. We It's all about doing better for our patients. You know, one thing I would say from the interventional cardiology experience is that it took a similar <clears throat> sort of latency uh, after which we were able to demonstrate that not only did IVIS improve outcomes, but it actually saved lives in the coronary circulation. And it took a long time and it took a village in order to get there. And I think as as a, an ambitious group of, of uh, aspiring um, uh, do-gooders, we all think that this is an opportunity to do better for our patients. Eric, I want to give you the last word. Um, where do you think we go next? And, and how are we going to get vascular surgeons to listen to interventional cardiologists and IRs to listen to interventional cardiologists and vice versa? What are we going to do to implement this with education efforts? Well, I listen to vascular surgeons more than they listen to me. So I think uh, that's a good start. And, you know, hopefully the same for IR. You know, I think that, again, this is not a operator, um, you know, dependent space. This is for all of us. And, 
the goal here again is less guessing, more evidence-based treatment. And I, I think that hopefully this document is starting a conversation um, and a platform for us, again, to teach the next generation how to use this technology and really, as mentioned, cement the evidence, the cost effectiveness, the value, um, so this can continue to be universally utilized for the benefit of our patients. So we got to start somewhere. I think this is uh, really a, a tipping point for the field, and I couldn't be more thankful to the two colleagues of mine who are, are steadily me on this Zoom call, both Chris and Kush, um, Herb Aaron, Alice Sahil, and many others who help make this a reality. And again, the leadership from Sky and getting um, all these many societies together to to put together a a, a very you know a forward thinking document. So I'm excited for the impact. I'm looking forward to continuing to work in this space with all of you. And I encourage the readers to look at this, reach out to us. And I think one thing that we will all benefit if you're not using IBIS is let us know what you need to understand this technology. You know, we we really need to start doing imaging interpretation workshops, understanding how workflows look like. You know, we're just really starting to get into the next phase of this. And so whatever feedback we can get to help uh, guide this space forward, I think will be beneficial. Um, Seal, thank you as always uh, for leading this conversation. Thanks, Eric. And uh, as, as to wit, your point is is well taken that the society meetings, I think, across specialties will be featuring workshops that are partnering with our industry partners to help start spreading the word. And, and then we'll hopefully have a propagation of that throughout uh, both regional and local programs that will allow us to, to spread the message. So again, I want to thank all of my panelists, and I want to thank all of you for listening. This has been Conversations in Interventional Cardiology. Uh, I'm delighted for you to, to listen to us today talking about intravascular ultrasound for peripheral artery and venous intervention. And uh, please check out our paper on uh, jsky.org, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much, everybody. <music>